Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. We are moving over to the EU Xbox region. We got Bust Down and Effect here in set number two of the day. Of course, I'm Dolson on the desk, joined by Gormizer. Same duo, different spot, though, this time around. And unfortunately, we don't get to say Grok, Paper, Scissors. No, they are Effect now, and I, I want to make the joke that they effectively, like, it's effectively <laughs> a worse name to me, right? But I was wondering if you were going to say it. You said you would. I you like did, so. Grok, Paper, Scissors a lot, but Effect, it's, uh, we'll see if they can affect the standing. Which we are going to take a look at right now, and this is, of course, Cyclones region. They're the number one seed in this area. Ooh, I like that color, Expect though. them to, uh, to hang around here. It is a, a beautiful color. Cyclone up top, Vroom Froom. Second place, bust down effect uh, are the way these standings go. A little bit more contested, all of the games up to this point. Three ones. When I say that, because a lot of the other regions, you'll see a lot of three O's. Uh, so Cyclone drops a map uh, to bust down last week. Room Froom as well drops one map to uh, to now effect. Tall task though uh, for effect today, going up against bust down. It's 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 a traditionally two versus yeah. four matchup kind of at this point, and, and Bust Down I think will be feeling confident. And that's the thing is you have to look at Bust Down and remember the fact that they are this team that has been taking close games and close sets to Cyclone mm -hmm. in the past, have been slowly but surely getting better. Last week wasn't exactly the way I think they wanted it to go. Obviously, you always want to be able to win when it comes down to it, but I mean, if you're up against Cyclone, you can only right. do so much. You can only do so much, and uh, jumping into this matchup will get to see the map bands as well, see what we're not allowed to play on. Frog Isle, Jaguar Falls, banned out uh, by effect this time around. And the final two, Bizarre. I know, every single time, you, <laughs> it's, I don't know why you ban out Bizarre. Shattered Desert is uh, map band number four here in this case, so so no Bizarre. And this is an important matchup, honestly, because we're still early on. These, these standings reset, so, I mean, making sure that you, at least if you're going to lose, try to make it somewhat contested because oh, yeah. those map differentials... They can get very lopsided towards the end of these splits. And they played a huge role. I mean, last split being like one of those areas where most regions like Cyclone, Flashpoint, and Elevate were all pretty much decided. Mm -hmm. But then you look at the two and three of each uh, each area and each region where it's just like, oh, man, you guys are literally right next to each other right now. You go to NA PS4 and it's all right next to each other right. from top to bottom. So kind of keeping things close pretty much all the way around. We're going to do battle on Bright Marsh to... Start out set number two of the day. Bust down <laughs> the battle the, of Bright Marsh. The battle of Bright Marsh. Yeah, it's something something to be written there. I'm sure. Uh, bust down, banning out uh, Atlas first time around. You're right. Effect of a very very nice color right. to look at. It's That's... a very very good balancing uh, balancing color here on opposite side. You can never wear pink when they're playing though. The backdrop I think would be just just a little bit too much. I have the to screen. remember that. This even this shirt is honestly towing the line. A lot of teams happen to have a lot of blue colors. Like You're in trouble nice, next like game when, when they split, oh, I think, or when, when we swap. When bust downs on that screen, might be a little bit different. Uh, I'll hold that, L. Picks and pens looking kind of standard up to this point. Tyra gone, Torvald gone, as well as Talos. The, the T-bands all across the board the opens up Genos for pick number one. And this is something I think we've seen a lot of teams favor lately, where it's just, I mean, Luminary is really, really solid. It's actually a little worrisome, I think, for bust down to see them forego Victor completely right. from the beginning. Same thing goes with Vivian. Those two we've seen kind of ride the top of the wave of console picks and bans for a long time. But Effect maybe, yeah, I was going to say, if they let it through, then the they're letting through the most dangerous down. combo, Victor plus Genos, which yeah. is, is deadlier than anything. Well, we're not even in his set anymore, but you, you see what a, a good free-firing Victor can do in the case of Prosper Logic last game. Only guy even close to touching six <laughs> digits. So well, you're right <laughs> to, to now sway it away from that. You, can, you see what a, a Victor can do on his own, much less with the Genos behind it. But you're going to get the Vivian instead. I don't know if I'm any less excited or more excited, I should say, to be going up against a Vivian Genos than I would have been a Victor Genos. And honestly, it might not just be very similar vein, but it might be better depending on where effect go. Because again, Vivian brings something. like Victor can be good against shields, but right. Vivian just has some potency against shields that no other champion really gets you to bring. So Khan is going here. to be in a more unfortunate scenario trying to keep that up. Where at the same time, like Victor, you're not going to see him break through the barricade. You're going to see right. him turn his attention away to someone else. He's going to be looking for other kills. And I think Bust Down just have a little bit of an edge because of that Genos in terms of their damage numbers. Just a little bit to uh it's to Like about 15% their, or so. That, would you say maybe a 15% increase maybe across the board? Uh, looking good for Bust Down, though. First three picks on the board. 
Grover, something that we've seen a lot of today, uh, namely with Stush in our first set, they kind of opted for these. Let's group up, roll together, yeah. hope it works out. It looked pretty good on, on Jaguar Falls before it didn't. And, uh, of course, a 3-0 for Flashpoints the way that. But uh, effect is looking maybe to improve on the Grover statistics for the day. Willow and Ash, though, a dead zone from the Willow is going to uh, cauterize a lot of the Grover healing. Yeah, it's going to cause a lot of trouble. Like, Grover, again, this is actually something Nick had said during the last set. But when you see Grover, you see Inara, and you're on Bright Marsh, you know these champions are all looking Where to group up. Dead goal. zone stops that. Dead zone stops that real good <laughs> when it comes it down to it. And you get, again, I think, along with Willow, two of the best tanks to have with a Genos that are going to be very aggressive, and then Vivian. Like The only thing I think they would have rather had would either be that Talus that's down there in the ban or that Victor that's over there for effect. And, and we get Drogos again for effect this time around. I know you last set maybe wanted a little bit of a Bomb King uh, introduction into this matchup, but it's going to be the Drogos instead for effect, looking to uh, maybe land some more of those Dragon Punches. Tilt things ever so much in their favor. At any rate, all ten locked in for both teams here. Set number two Let's get it started. Let's get it, boys and girls. Appreciate you guys coming for game one. Bust down versus effect. This will be interesting. Yeah, yeah. I like effect's draft going into this map. I think the uh, the pressure they're going to have from the Drogo's victory is really strong, especially for console. And Inara Khan is just historically I, I, just a great tank duo. It's a very sustainy. The, the problem is going to be the Grover playing into the Willow. As always, we know that is a really powerful counter pick. So we'll have to see how effect play it. I think yep. they are, I believe, new in coming from relegations, if I'm not wrong. So a uh, team with not too much experience here. And hopefully, uh, hopefully it doesn't bite them too much. <laughs> yeah, they opt to go for the Worm Jets for Drogos, too. It's what you'd expect at least to see on this map, just be him being able to stay in a position where he can hit them. They can't really see him, depending mm -hmm. on where he's firing from. Pretty standard runes over, like runes. It's pretty <laughs> standard talents over, <laughs> <laughs> overall. Sorry. You can tell where my mind is if you guys know where I got that from. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, standard stuff. Uh, not too much surprising. Looks like they actually, Minara, okay. She is going towards the mid as expected. Victor going to trade here on the right into the Ash. She's actually bullying pretty far forward. Great start from Bust Down to keep them pressured out. Khan has to back up, so the control's totally in their favor. But the Drogos, if he can pinch, this could not be good for Bust Down. Yep, raining down a number fish. He has to bash out. Vivian low too. Effect perfectly. At just break down that offense for Bust Down. Good. First blood coming out from effect. Right now we see that Sibs is currently pushing that Willow all the way back. They are in such a good position right now. Just this Drogo is hovering above a certain point. Take a few, firing a few shots at the Willow, trying to prevent her from not only moving up into the sky, but making sure they're low enough so that they can't contest points. Yeah, the Genos chip coming into him, too. That yeah, does yeah. a little bit, but not enough to get rid of him. I mean, you're not going to completely bully him out. 87% and climbing on the point. The Inara is still capping. I don't know if Bust Down have a chance to touch. Emmerfish may be the only one who could have bashed in. Actually, they did get the touch in the back. Looks like Willow actually jumped over and touched from the back. Oh, she shouldn't be long for this world, but the Inara can't look Ooh. at her. And she got lifted on point. No DR means she's going to go down in a second as well. Pear Doggo finding wow. that kill, too. Whirlwind on the point to equalize. No dead zone means it just goes effects way. Wow. Great man. touch by Bust Down but they, they couldn't convert it to a cap. Yeah, they still end up losing the point. Sibs is firing a few shots on the Emmerfish here. Three individuals on bust down are where the point is, though. And they actually do manage to get not only one, but two kills. Khan's looking to be next on the minion, and he goes down as well. The Faith Flight comes out. They really, really want to use this advantage that they have to the best of their ability on a map like or am I like on a map like Bright yeah, Marsh is going to be important. Yeah, yeah. Faith Flight is just a zone. I mean, he got yeah. I think he's probably feeling himself because at the end of that fight, he had a really sick air shot onto the Drogo, so he's probably just like, I got Fate Blade, I'm going in, I yeah, don't care. Yeah. But uh, just a little aggressive zone, you know, nothing nothing too major. Settling on the rim here, dodging the Drogo's spam. Uh, the Drogo's, he's doing a pretty good job of keeping him zoned. The Dog actually dropping back to fight the point, trying to keep that contest a little more contested than it is. Barrack rotates in to keep that going, but uh, things settling in, just, I think uh, Bust Down's gonna probably give him a little bit of space here once the Barrack takes a poke. Yeah, Ember Fish is getting a little bit of damage from those rockets. He is firing at Paradoggo, trying to make sure he can get it. But Dreams Era with that double snipe. Nice through time and space. They'll definitely be dreaming of that one for a long time to come. Nice job coming out from him on Bust Down. A certain dominance is available. Going to be followed up by Dome Shield. Smutney ends up jumping off the side to try and make sure that he can get back with his team faster and so they can regroup. What a great start to that fight. I mean, yeah. Bust Out, like, that, that's the dream, right? Not No setup even. No all their ultimates used. Just good positioning. There's there's a lot of places on this map I think you can find that that little, like, checkmate almost. Yeah. Like, if you can checkmate someone in that hallway where there's no way to dodge it, then 
that's the best way you can do it. Like, yeah, you can use another ult to confirm it if you have another ult to combo bust down, only really have the Ash, and you don't want to use that this early. But still, great by Dreams, finding that to open up the fight. But now that we're back into this next fight, actually, Effect finding a couple picks on the right side, it looks like. The off tank and the support Ooh. a little too forward. Could not contest the zone. Bust down just picking, oh, sorry, excuse me, bust down getting picked apart. In fact, now settling in, gonna stagger this barrack. Actually, great wall in. Yeah. All right, he managed to get away, but I mean, he shouldn't be long for this world anyway. Yeah, it's like he had just as a backup just in time. Styles actually ends up trying to get away. Sheik does get the kill, manages him off. The seismic crash is there. Four ultimates online for effect as well. They just did such a good job with pushing that advantage earlier on. Yeah, yeah, agreed, agreed. I mean, now they're, they're taking it to him right now. I mean, they're pretty forward zone considering where the card is. It's just rounding the final corner right now. Emmerfish actually pretty low on the side, having to hug his his seed shield to keep it up. Looks like Bustdown wants to commit ults to defend this. Fae Flight used, but it's in the face of a victor. He's going to have to be really defensive here. Now it's just going to be kind of the Dragon Ball Z back and forth up top between him and the Drogos, but he decides the Inar is a little more important. If you get rid of the person capping the point, the, it, at this point, it, it's going to go into fast overtime with how long it's been going, but the picks are still going yeah, to effect man. three down on Bustdown. Sibs getting a double kill, and the rest of effect, one other person, the tank, more than anyone, just also gets a kill of his own. Sibs with that double kill, one kill coming out for the con as well, just so effective. But this is going to be a replay of the sniper was we just saw the positioning, such a good position. He saw the Grover, he saw the Victor, double snipe, perfectly spaced and perfectly timed. Very well done from Bust Down. That wasn't even that wasn't even a checkmate. That was just a perfect read. Yeah, I think, it was. On, on yeah, how they were rotating, really good by Dreams. Also, I noticed he does the same thing I do when I Genos heal. Where like when you want to make sure you heal the right target, you kind of look down towards the yeah. floor because if you're looking at three people, then right, who knows where it's gonna go? So, yeah, good to see some some tech. I. I Okay, some, some tech news. I didn't make, come I up you. with it. I didn't come up with it. But no, I just, you heard it here first. I just crazy came up with it. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah, but still, good to see. Uh, <laughs> ultimates coming in. I mean, Fae Flight used didn't end up helping them. It only hurt them. So, unfortunate for Buster not having that for this mid. And, and in fact, have every single ultimate coming in. Yep. Combos, I mean, I could see them using maybe Barrage Ooh. into the Seismic Crash or the other way. But actually, they assert dominance early. Emberfish tanking all these. He wow, used all yeah. the charges on the Invincible. Ash, that's not what you want to see. Sheik's going to have to back up here. Emberfish with total control on the side, but point control not going either way yet. Yeah, here comes the Dragon Punch through time and space as well. One of them whiffed, another one find it, found a kill, but Styles and Emberfish, man, both of them have a kill of their own. Two individuals down on effect, and it was so unfortunate. Slayer tried to back off to try and dodge that assert. Dominance trying to like, make sure he didn't get stunned, but he did get caught. Him and Sheik, man, just both went down there. Just, I believe, respawning. Overpower comes through, but he misses it as well. The damage is coming in too much on Slayer. He's going to have to back off Battle Shout to give himself immunity. 93% on the point for Bust Down, though. Sheik finds a kill onto Arya, man, and that's going to be a start for something. Yeah, and Nara manages to touch, too, so this could be good for effect. Nara is still fairly healthy, being, being sustained by Lexus and Grover. Smutney pushing the barrack off of the point. Now they're going to go get this pick on Emmerfish, most likely. Ooh. Doesn't have dash. Yep, does get picked off. Capcom time still going in the way of effect. If they can get staggered kills here, this could go up 3-0. Smutney bullying this tree side. Really wants to get this stagger because yeah. that's what they need. If they can dismount Emmerfish on the right side, sorry, excuse me, pair on the right side, this actually... <laughs> that mid started really bad for effect, but they completely turned it around. Yeah, they did. Now look at how far back Bust Down is. They barely had a chance to actually move up 93% on the point. And unfortunately, effect's going to be the one that captured that. 3-0 currently with the potential to actually end this game right about now. It's going to be so, so powerful with this go around. Yeah, yeah, good control here on the right side by the con. Actually, basically really, really good zoning, I think, right now by by effect. And our holding left side, she actually might go in for this barrack pick, but nobody's close enough to follow up, so I should be able to get away with his life. So he's getting bullied a bit by the Willow as well. Uh, just spam coming in, no Faith Flight yet, almost charged. Actually, Emmerfish gets a little overextended on the side, tries to get a kinetic burst knockback, does get picked off for his trouble. They have to use the Faith Flight to equalize. He's pressuring the backline, doesn't find any kills quite yet. Yeah, Doggo's getting some shots off, uses the Fae Flight. He said it perfectly. He's trying to get some damage or a kill, and he does find it onto Sheik. But unfortunately, the rest of Bust Down is getting pushed in. Such a good dead zone. He does get the Grover that was so well-timed, well-spaced as well. He actually is. Sibs is trying to get some shots off, trying to do some damage just a little bit onto Arya Van and Emberfish here on the right. Fire Spec comes through, but he had to reload. Doesn't maximize on it. He's got to back off just a little bit. Got to give him some respect. Rest of effect being down. Now that Sibs it does end up getting staggered, all ultimates are online, but they've got a minute 20 still on the clock. Seismic Crash comes through, finds a stun, actually. But I don't know if that's going to be enough for them to actually net any kills. Yeah, it finds oh, a few, but it wasn't oh enough. Triple my goodness. in the corner. Everybody.
Smutty. Smutty was screaming, come help me, come help me. And everyone yeah. walks right into Dreams is through time and space. What a good call by him. Uh, this, he, he's, gotten a, he's gotten five kills and two ults. That is that is crazy value from the Jedi. If your Jedi is just doing that, you're, you're feeling like, you know, we don't have as much healing, but uh, if we're yeah. getting those picks to flip those fights, that is more than what you want from a Genos player. As soon as I like passed it off like to you, I was like <laughs> thinking like I saw the seismic crash, and then I was like, wait, I didn't get anybody, and I'm like, wait, where's she standing? As soon as I like she's on the space. That seismic crash got three kills on his own team. Oh, true, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. seismic crash got a triple friendly <laughs> fire. At the end of that fight. Super awesome job going up from Smudley. Two kills for Epic. Two of them are end up down. Two of them do end up getting picked off. However, Epic is actually pushing in right now. Dragon Punch to come through to try and break through that dome. She's going to try and get Barret. He does find it onto Styles. That's going to be pretty big, and it's going to net them possibly the end of this game. Yeah, yeah. Styles' dome shield was just a little bit off from Dream, so he couldn't save him. So now no heals on the Ooh. board for Bust Down. Aryavan drops to take down the Drogos, but I mean, <laughs> Vivian's tanky. She's not that tanky. You cannot yeah. supplement that cap pressure. So, wow, effect coming down. They, they, that was a dominant performance, I think, was, by man. them. Even, even, it's not like they won every fight, they lost fights and still retook. That yeah. was really good, by the way. Like, it was just, not only was it a 4-0, but it was more than a convincing 4-0. Like, for Bust Down to have that 93% onto the point for, like, that round to try and turn things around, and for Effect to just immediately swoop in and start just picking them off one after the other, just like a surgical removal. Yeah. It was absolutely so well played by them. Yeah, I think the Drogo's pick was one of the keys there. I mean, we were watching him a lot. Let me see these stats. The Drogo's, yeah, 73k damage, so... Solid by him. He was able to apply a lot of pressure there. And like you you look at Vivi and you think, oh, that's Hitskin, that's a counter, but it's she's not as long range as yeah. Victor is, you know. So the Victor able to counter the Fae Flying Willow way more effectively than Arivan would be able to counter Sibs' warm jets. On top of that, I feel like with the map being Bright Marsh itself, it's harder to hit Drogos around like some of those like apartments. And he, he can has, play the roofs, yeah. yeah. He can play the roofs really, really well. Aryavan had to find like near perfect positioning to pick off that Drogos every single time because with Bright March being so close together, all of those buildings, all those all that architecture can just can just be used as perfect cover for Sibs in that situation. Yeah, and perfect cover. It's I mean, able to spam down from on top, just yeah. being able to do this. Like even just using that tree, like even Pair Doggo yeah. can't look up to fight him. Aryavon being pushed out from both sides. I think that was another story too. Like Aryavon tr trying to take these angles and just getting denied. It's not like he wasn't trying to counter Sibs, but it's just hard. It's yeah. hard. And you saw even Pair Doggo, like the comms must have been all about wow, what a oh, oh two wow, fantastic that was actually really good, yeah. Didn't notice that in the replay, but uh you can tell like even Paradoggle, when he was Fae fighting sometimes, was looking at Sibs during the Fae fight, like, yeah. do I try? Yeah, Is it yeah. worth it? Am I, gonna, am I willing to go for those confirms? But, I mean, maybe he should have because he had a, Sibs had a dominant performance. Yeah, really good performance overall coming out from them. I mean, like, just the positioning from him along with just effects obvious teamwork it was that yeah. they had. Not to say the bust down didn't have any, but they did have a lot to offer during that match on Bright Marsh. However, that was only game one. We're going to cut right, right to a quick break, and we'll get right back to you guys. Steel Series, the official peripheral provider of the Paladins Console League. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. Effect, the first win in our second set of the day. Dreams, she she tried the best she could. Triple through time and space. Double through time and space. Not quite enough. Bust down, interestingly enough. Drop map number one to Effect, Gormizer. You're missing the low-hanging fruits of Effect effectively win. No, they didn't effectively win. They literally won. Well, you know. <laughs> they didn't effectively win. They, have, they effectively won the game. Yeah. I'll, I'll quit. I'm yeah, done. You, That's the last said, one. Please. 
feel free exit stage <laughs> left here. Uh, but no, that's on, honestly though. I, I think this region has traditionally been very like seed dependent. First seed will yeah. always win against two, three, four. Second seed wins three and four, so on and so forth. So effect technically on four seed beating bust down at least in map number one. An interesting thing to look at. Let's see what map number two has in store for us. See if maybe bust down will be able to answer back a little bit. Stone Keep is where we're headed down to round out the last set with Stone Keep. Start this one off in the same spot. It's going to be interesting to see if they can kind of keep it on like some of the normal maps. When you ban Frog and Jag, you kind of end up going towards, I mean, yeah. Brightmar, Stone Keep, probably maybe Serpent Beach for that third one, mm -hmm. or we'll maybe branch out of somewhere like Frozen Guard, depending on how these teams feel. But Bust Down again going to be taking first pick this time around. So Effect feeling pretty confident, not only enough to be able to be second pick in their own map, hmm. but kind of keeping the the tide rolling with them, I guess. I wouldn't be surprised if they want to leave open another Victor and be like, yeah. cool. Do you want Genos? You want Victor? Which one are you going to go for? Because Bust Down historically has gone for the Genos. I mean, they welcomed welcomed the challenge on map number one. And uh, you're right, though. I mean, the Drogos w was over for effect in the last game, and, and they made it look pretty good. And this is a map where in our last set, we saw the Bomb King sort of flex some of those muscles, didn't come out on top towards you the end of it. Work, and that's kind of where I look towards this one is, you know, you're going to get one of, uh, with Tyra Bandai, you're likely going to get Victor in some capacity, likely going to yeah. get Vivian in some capacity. It's one of those blasters. Get off, get what, what do you round out your composition with blasters-wise? Because Willow's been in the conversation yeah. today. Drogos has as well, as well as the Bomb King. It's sort of that three, that three triangle of blasters, and, and I wonder which way they're going to end up going. I think... If you have someone who can play Bomb King the way we saw last set, then you go Bomb yeah, King all day. True. But otherwise, <laughs> on the, especially when it comes to, to Stone Keep, Neil. Willow, Drogos are a little bit more consistent. And because of that, you can probably rely on them. But the biggest thing is is they aren't as prominent, friend? I guess, is the best way to word it. Like, right. you don't have to grab one over the other unless you only can play one. But usually they translate pretty well in terms of blasters. So as long as your blaster player has some versatility under them under their belt, they should be able to do it. The and the biggest thing is that do not looking back at last game, it kind of felt like Bustdown had the counter draft. It just yeah. came down to effect playing a little better. So when it comes down to these moments, like, I'm not – quite sure like Genos Leon Vivian that's you a great start and that's going to technically counter some of the picks I've listed and they could go Willow here and, and again have the same counter they had last time but it doesn't really matter if you can't play to it and and interestingly enough in, in my opinion is that on less effect go for a, a triple tank composition Makoa is going to go unpicked and unbanned in this game I mean they, they already have Khan they I already have Inara they could go right. Makoa for, for pick five on the effect side league. but that's not something I think we're often used to saying is there's just no Makoa in this game. It's the world we live in sometimes. But every once in a while it happens. He's going to probably get forgotten here. And I wouldn't be too upset with it just because triple tank on this map isn't historically something that is going to dominate. Drogos, not until Leon comes Vivian, through. at least. <laughs> not until Leon Vivian. You never know. I mean, honestly, Leon Vivian, in my mind, might be enough to make you rethink a Drogos pick. You might go, you know what? Yeah, Maybe true. we do want the triple tank right now. Maybe we don't want it, but they've locked it in, so we'll just have to see how it fares. Yeah, under a lot of duress, I think that Drogos <laughs> is going to be not only Genos, but Leon Vivian. Let's see if Bust Down can make good on the threat that they brought to the table. Game two, let's get it underway. Yeah, that's actually a good point to make. What's he that? actually did lock Drogos last into yeah. both Leon and Vivian. If there's any map you're going to do it on, it's Stone Keep, I think. I mean, think about the uh, the matches we saw in the PPL recently where Drogos can play in places where Leon and Vivian can't see him as well. He can just True. hug yeah. the top of whatever building they're in. But Effect is going to have, sorry, excuse me, Bustdown's going to have to control both sides to limit, to limit him. Because okay, yeah, if they right. don't, He's going to just be able to hug above them and spam the point. That's kind of the benefit of Drogos on this map. I mean, it led some team. It led Renegades to their first win in months. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll have to see how they play it. Nothing too surprising uh, here in the legendaries or the talents. And uh, I want to see how they take this fight. Bustdown's probably going to want to control the keep because they want to stay closer to the Drogos. They don't want to give him away. But I could see them going into the low ground instead if they think Drogos is going to try to play up there. And it actually yeah. looks like they do. They do play the low ground to try to keep the opening. But the Drogos is just going to play inside the keep instead, which is a good adaptation from Sims. Yeah, it's nice to be able to have that reliable cover. And man, oh man, Arya Van just gets sniped. I immediately see him. The victor does the damage. And now the rest of Effect already know that their momentum, that the momentum is in their favor. They're already pushing pushing so far forward. And one thing it is that I actually that I actually wanted to mention, like during that talent pick, is that 
No storm of bullets. Actually, vortex yeah. grip for a con, which is that's going to be really important playing into like. That's going to force them to buy resilience more than anything. Actually, also combustible for Sibs, too. So he's playing, I think it was the last second swap. He's almost, I just missed it on the screen. But he's playing uh, inside keep and just doing spam. So he's not yep. going to go Worm Jets because of the counter potential from Pear Doggo. Right. It's a good dodge from Doggo trying to fight him here on the side. Sibs just looking for that fire spit. He's going to have to disengage here. His team actually also backed up off the point. So he's a little split. If Pear pushes, it might be over for him. But good pressure for him. Forces Pear back. Control still on the point in Bustdown's favor, though. Yeah, he's trying his best to try and see if he can get a few snipes off, try and get a little bit of hits just to make sure he can actually get the damage, and he does find it onto Sibs. Well, very well done. Barrage comes through as well, trying to solo Emmerfish. Doesn't actually end up making it out either. Aryavan, Emmerfish, Style, so many. Almost all of their team. Now, now all of their team, actually. All of them now, at least, except for the Genos, I believe, have at least gotten one kill for them. Now the positioning is in such a good spot for them. Air with four assists, and the rest of them are looking pretty good, pretty positive right now. Great forward zone here. The tanks were stacked there for a second, but Emmerfish immediately recognized that, rotating towards this high ground to keep that controlled. Styles, I think the better one to put down here. You don't really need to poke around the corner as much yeah. in the bottom left, so Ash up top to be able to spam on that protected railing spot is really good, but uh, she's still going to have to back up with four people walking straight okay. at her, including a whirlwind. <laughs> I mean, no, Ash is strong, but not that strong, forced out. But the Inara actually a little Overextended in church because of this. Walking yourself off, seismic crash, oh, maybe man. confirm a kill, but no one's really there to help Smutney at all. Yeah, he sort of moves his way in, uses the seismic crash so if he can get anything. Smutney is the one that ends up dying. Sheik dies as well, but now we see that two for two has been traded. Their healer is down on bus downside, though. They still have a frontliner left and a healer on effect. With Geno's just coming back, it might force Bust down to back off just a little bit. There's a shoulder bash, and there's the dash coming from Leon as well. Both of them have to back up. Got to wait just a little bit. Sib's getting some damage off into their back line all the way back there towards their spawn to try and force them to take a little bit more damage before they start fighting again. Great rockets from Sibs. I mean, yeah. that, that level of confirmation from across the map for a Drogo's is, is more than what you could expect. Really solid by him. Also, th that fight got turned uh, because I think of an accidental catch on Styles too. Great, by the way, great enlightenment to stop himself yeah. in the air to catch Sibs there. Really good by Paradoggo. Does trade his life for it. Hopefully, for their sake, not Smutney's as well. He backs up to his Grover's waiting arms though. Safely out. Pressure on the point still coming from Bust Down. Emmerfish trying to poke into this fire area. He's going to have to back off because of that Victor poke, and things I think are going to slow down here a little bit. Yeah, so, uh, yeah it looks like Smutney ended up having to back off, forcing himself with that wall. Slayer is up in the high ground, but now he's being rushed down by not necessarily two, but three people, actually. He is in a bad spot by himself. If I were him, I would really, really consider trying to get out of there, but he can't. Can't really find a way. He already committed with that commander's grab, and because of that, he had to pretty much fight it or die, and it looks like both him and Sibs have chosen to die instead. Yeah, Slayer just got a little bit too forward there. Yeah. When your team doesn't control mid, you can't go that forward unless you have really good pressure from the fire, which is that little short area where the barrack turret is right now. You need to have pressure from there if you're going to zone that forward. And he, he paid for it. You know, he went that forward. It just was not enough. He has to use the overpower onto the Genos just to equalize the healing. But any marks that are out don't immediately go away. There is still some healing if Bust Down managed to find some damage to convert this. But looks like they have to back up. They might have enough time for him to get back, but not if Emmerfish gets staggered like that. Man, yeah. Slay a great aggression up top. Bust Down just. Offense is going to slow down a lot. I mean, yeah, they do have the contest available, but killing Genos at that point in time was really important for the rest of for the rest of Effect to be able to try and stall this one out. They do get the first point for them at least onto Stone Keep, which is going to be really important. Two ultimates up for Effect. Well, three. Sorry, excuse me. And then four online for Bust Down with a fifth slowly building up for Aryavon. Yeah, ultimate economy here fairly even, as you just mentioned. Inara with the size has a seismic crash, so maybe they could have it set up again with the barrage. But last time Sheik's barrage wasn't that effective. He yep. used it. Uh, he used it on the uh, on the Ash that was pushing him when he was pretty low HP. I think he saved some of the charges, but still, not what he wanted to see. Their Paradogo with the two confirms there when they got a little bit too aggressive up top. So good play by him, I think. Really solid so far. Five and one. That's what you want to see from your Leon into a Drogos yeah. on this map. Five. Yeah, we pretty much see that. Two. Most people on Bust Down side, I believe, are in the positive KD right now with Effect oh, now yeah. slowly starting to build their way back up to a positive KD as well. They're going to try and hold and actually try to contest the high ground spot from this position. The shoulder bash actually go in and start dominance and follow through. Wall goes up. Now the fight actually begins. Slayer goes down, but so does Dome Shield. He's going to end up dying. Yeah, there we go. He actually does end up going down. Caught a little bit early, but he is still there. Through time and space, Dragon Punch. So many ultimates are flying one after the other with Bust Down being the leaders of this fight. 
perfect positioning, I think, by Bust down there. Paradoggo slid out, and since there were so many ultimates up top, everybody inside the keep got forced out. Yeah. So Paradoggo had fantastic spam. Got, I think, three kills during that fight, so great on him to start. Mark coming in on him. They know he's the carry right now, yeah. but Oriamon, no slouch either. Putting on a ton of damage pressure. Emmerfish gonna have to leave, but uh, great positioning, I think, by them right now. The aggression from effects coming in might force them out of keep. Yeah, it is for the amount They have to pretty much back off and give them the respect that effect needs right now. Paradoggle going down is not a good look for them, though. Styles being one of the only ones on the point, he should try and retreat. He does end up dashing away. They have to pretty much concede this right now, at least until Paradoggle gets back, to make sure that he doesn't, like, to make sure that they at least have their full stacks ready, especially with the Enlightenment being there. Even though that is only one ultimate, you don't see it having as much of an effect as like a Sir Dominus or some of the others, but it does have its place in this team fight. Yeah, yeah. FX retake there was really good, I think. I mean, getting the pick on getting the pick on a Paradoggo obviously is massive because yeah. he's such a big part of this. But still, they took the high ground. They knew what they needed to do. They have to protect their Drogos. Point contestant going both ways. Everfish getting bullied pretty hard here, but he's holding his ground right now as yep. Aryvon finds a kill on Sheik. Yeah, it's forcing Slayer to actually just sort of position himself in a way that doesn't end up with him getting killed, but Blossom, uh, sorry, not Blossom, the Whirlwind ends up coming through. Slayer gets booted right off of that high ground. Now he's in a bad spot. Enlightenment to try and come through. Can't find the kill onto Sips. Does find the hit, I believe, but it's not enough to be able to kill him. He is really, really low, but the healing from Grover just over time is going to be too much. Bust down and effect are both on the point, which forces the overtime. Overpower comes through as well. Emmerfish does go down, but they really, really... That just shows how much they actually wanted that point for them to use overpower at that last few seconds. Yeah, I mean, it also countered the Assert Dominance because Emmerfish got his second true, Assert true, Dominance of that point. fight, which is, you know, Good crazy point. for Ash's ult charge. I mean, getting two alts in one fight as a tank is Good really point. big, but still, they had the counter up. It was really good for them. Also, the peel they had for Sibs was crazy. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I was watching the heal. He was so low, I was just staring at the heal indicator in the corner. Yeah. He got blossomed and then immediately shouted. Like, everyone was just yeah. like, save Sibs because of last <laughs> game. And, Saving Pryot, Sibs worked out this time. <laughs> Got them that win on that I mid. That. Plus a solid ult charge there. Uh, Sibs, though, can't save him from that. Yeah. Styles from main, I think, poking up top. Seismic Crash coming in. Might oh, get the conversion okay. here, but I don't know if they can follow up. The commanders grab to try and follow up on that stun. They're trying to do what they can to kill Emmerfish, but Slayer looking pretty low. Lexian and Slayer both go down Arya Vaughn. Definitely looking out to try not only pressure, but make sure they can kill this Anara. They're already just swarming all over her. They do find the kill, which that's going to be really, really important for the rest of Bust Down to try and get this momentum started. Hey, uh, have you met her friends? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, she, yeah, she, she tells, we go out for drinks like a lot, like all the time. Okay. Yeah. She I always, she always asks me that question, which I don't, I don't know why she always asks me that. Like, I've talked, like, she, we very always talk so much. She's very forgetful. That, I mean, that makes sense. That makes it, sense. it happens. It happens. Yeah. In fact, uh, forgetting how badly their last push went, going the same exact way as they did before. Hopefully with a yeah. little more coverage in yeah. main. Sibs pressuring on the left. Gets a little bit displacement, but it's not going to be enough to confirm a kill. Yeah, it's not. He does get a few rockets off fire, so it's going to be pretty big. Styles is taking a lot of damage, though. Can't underestimate Drogo's damage. Arya Vaughn now in a one-on-one -on -one spot. You will not want to be on the receiving end of those shots. Vivian doing so much damage. Barrage coming through. Wall as well, but in this situation, I don't know if the is going to be in a really good spot because she is right there. But Slay a nice awareness, actually. I didn't realize that, but I saw the con out the corner of my eye. He actually jumped down to help out that Anar. Very well played. That allows them to get not one pick. Well, they only allows them to get one pick, actually. I got confused. Bust down. Did get a double kill with Doggo on their side. Yeah, the pressure the pressure that forced Leia to drop down just walked yeah. them into Paradoggo's line of sight. I mean, Paradoggo's having a fantastic game. Always in the right place to get these confirms here. This is a great spot for him, having this long line. If he was shooting the other way, he wouldn't have ha have as many chances to get the max damage on his Eminence. But right there, he can pierce. He can go all the way back towards that door, really confirming that maximum damage. Emmerfish yeah. taking a lot of pressure up here. Ash is a lot better at pushing this than holding it. And the pressure means that the Assert Dominance gets forced out. Stuns too, but no kills quite yet for bust down. Yeah, they're trying so hard to make sure they can actually get something going, but Sims finding the kill, that's going to be huge for effect. They do have the spawn advantage thanks to just where they are positioned for bust down. It's going to be really good for them, but trading one for one like that, man, they are trying to stall. Clearly, they want to go in for ultimates online, but they don't want to use too much. The only one it was they used was bust down, making sure that they could actually use the assert dominance to try and clean some stuff up. They do get Sheik, though. Smunda being forced to back off. Doesn't get knocked off the point, but it is... Well, he does get knocked off the point, but he doesn't get knocked off the map, which is just enough for him to be able to do something. Yeah, and he, uh, he using the uh, the alt line just to yell in his face at the last second. This is that mid fight yeah. from Paradoggo where he had the yeah. great flank. Again, like I said, the pressure up top forced them onto the outside ledge. Sometimes that's safe, but not with a player like Paradoggo waiting for you outside. Yeah. Great rotation, I think, from effect there. KD's across the board. 
Actually, effects, uh, you'd think it would be, there'd be a little bit higher considering they, they had the first defense, but I mean, just the, just looking at the stats, it looks really firmly in Bust Down's favor. Yeah. I mean, Leon I, topping the damage charts along with Aryavan. I mean, we say it once, we say it so many times, all the uh, casters say this, all the desk people say this. Three, Bust Down is winning these two, mid fights. And if you win one. the mid fights, like almost every well, effect, time, yeah, then yeah. you can, then like, you, in fact, you, won the last one even after what, uh, that's true, what actually, yeah, yeah, managed yeah. to do. Yeah, 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 that's true, actually. Like, last round, that is the case. Like, they were actually able to start, get themselves rolling momentum wise, but I mean, still, it just seems like Bust Down is, like, still so commanding with these fights that are happening. It's super hard for it to actually get some use, but the overpower comes through, to, through time and space to try and punish Slayer, but he manages to catch Sheik as well. Very, very well positioned. They trade one for one because of that, though. Although they're going to have to be forced to back off just a little bit. The Dragon Punch Man catches off Styles. Doesn't actually, I mean, it does catch him off guard. It's really, really hard for him to actually try and escape that situation. Emberfish trying to get some shots. A few little bit of damage. Body block coming out from the con, though. Emberfish does go down. Great block by Slay. Actually, Seismic Crash coming in to get a finish, but I think it's just a slow down Paradoggo, not let him man. push in. Unfortunate that it didn't get much value, but they still managed to get the kill. Still have the cap time. How yeah. are Effect going to zone here? Looks like Smutney climbing towards the banana area in keep, trying to control that high ground. Really important to keep that locked down. Paradoggo, I think, actually flanking towards the altar area. I'm not sure if Bust Down have that locked down, though, and it looks like they don't. That's yeah. not going to be good for this fight. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't think it will be either. Paradoggo, though, getting a lot of damage on the Slayer. Styles is the first to go down with that barrage coming through. They know where Paradoggo is. They know Leon. Yeah, he wants to use that enlightenment, but it just barely scraped Sheik. However, immediately after that, he managed to pick up a double kill with Aryavan, making sure to pick off that Khan. Now that they are forced back off of the point, Lexian being just so low, he has to give himself a time to heal, which not only out of combat, which is just passive healing in general. He's got to make sure he gives them the respect they need. 99% on the point for Effect. Bust down, slowly building that, though. Yeah, Effect have a chance to retake her, though. Looks like Drogo's rotating to keep to be with his Grover. And Ar's going to drop down from up top. They can't really stop that. Sibs is hugging the wall. Gets picked by Ember, though. That's a yeah. lot of damage out of the fight. Look at all this pressure from Emberfish onto Lexison. Can he oh. stay here and keep healing? No, he's going to have to run. Two picks through time oh, and space finds man. Sheik again. What a commanding defense from Bust Down on that mid fight. Drogos just respawned. They pretty yeah. much got team wiped that last fight. The dedication to using those ults pretty much shows how hard they wanted to win that. They oh, wanted yeah. to make sure that they wanted that momentum because now they're up 3 2, and now they're in the spot to where they can build up their ultimates and they can try and push it into, into end it. Yeah, yeah, putting yourself in that position is always going to be good. Oh, that's impression. Oh, oh, wow. oh okay. that's just, this is the sad zone for Ash. I've been, I have been there, Emmerfish. Do not <laughs> feel bad. Full sad zone mode sometimes when you're pushing this upper, when you come into that room. I mean, his team wasn't really ready yet. They, I don't think they were, they were right around that corner. And they don't think, I guess they just didn't call it in time, so Emmerfish wasn't sure when he had to back away. Still, though, good pressure by effect, by bust down to find that kill. Yeah. Looks like playing in the bottom left fire area. This is good for him because he has a cross angle onto this Victor. Going to force Sheik potentially forward, which isn't going to be as big of a deal without Emmerfish there, but he is back now. So settling into a little bit of a stalemate here. Yeah, Aryavan being forced, not necessarily being forced, but he took a little bit of damage there, almost died, the general ceiling comes through, but he's just controlling the side room, man. But that's exactly what I was talking about. That's how his health looked the last time he tried that. Except this time when he peaked again, bust down, not bust down, effect, we're actually ready to make sure they picked up that kill. Now they have it. You see Lexian and, but you see Lexian and the Khan, both him and Slayer are pushing forward to try and make sure they can get something. But Spundy going down, the alignment to come through, get some damage onto him, but it's not gonna be enough. Bust down being forced to respawn. And on top of that, now that the momentum has shifted, Effect has a little bit of control of this high ground. Yeah, there's a great flank by Sheik too. Sheik dropped down from the high ground to help him confirm that kill. Vortex won't confirm, won't get any kills there. Whirlwind to save his tanks actually, but the, the tanks of Effect are getting really forward. This is gonna be oh. a good seismic crash. Through time and space doesn't find anything up top, so it's all going Effect's way after that ultimate is used. Oh, Emmerfish nice trying to run, but a great wall. Great, fantastic wall to catch Emmerfish in there. That was great by Effect. Yeah, that was so, so well-timed, just well everything. So many compliments coming out for, com coming out from me for Effect. They did so well with just holding that mid-fight. I believe Spunny getting a little bit too aggressive, though. But look at how he is literally teetering on the brink of dying. But the healing from Grover is so poignant, poignant yeah, it's that, that it's so hard to kill him. Yeah, plus the rejuvenate from the Mother's Grace. Exactly, exactly. It gives you that 40% exactly. bonus healing. Uh, it's it's really big at getting out of these. I mean, it used to be even higher. They had to nerf it. And even now, you can see how much it gives for you. There's a reason why rejuvenate yeah. is such oh, a good card. Wrecker coming online. Absolutely melting styles. He had no chance. We're going to go to a final mid-fight. And 
economy wise, it looks like effect have the advantage. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was actually like thinking that a little bit because I'm like looking. They have a certain dominance and they have dome shield, which is like, honest, uh, like honestly, Saya's not gonna really try to use overpower until he sees that a certain dominance most go likely. down. Most likely because he won't really get a lot of mileage off of like not having as many open edges like Points on this map. He'll try and like wait for a little bit to try and see if he can get something like Dragon Punch, Barrage. Whirlwind is literally 2% away that I'm sure he'll just end up getting passively. Dome Shield as well, followed by the Assert wow. Dominance, Enlightenment. Ooh. The Ultimates are slowly Ooh. building for Bust Down, but I agree. I do think Effect has the advantage here. Bust Down has a chance to get some of them, though. I mean, yeah, they might wait for Assert Dominance for the combo, or they might just do it. Let's see where they go on this mid. If Bust Down go keep, I think they're going to want to use it quickly. Yeah. Both teams settling in, but it looks like really tentative so far. Slay is waiting in the back. He knows he knows something's up. He wants to try and make sure he can get something going, but with Ash being in such a Bad spot once again. She's not really getting punished for it though. Nice job using that arcway. But like I said, I literally just mentioned it. He used the overpower to make sure that she does not get anything started for her team. He was literally just waiting in the back to try and see when she would try and go for it. Try and stop it. He does stop it. Two members on effect are down. The alignment and dope shield still are alive through time and space is coming up as well but with dragon punch and barrage it's gonna be a lot harder for that dome shield to be to play a major factor in this next fight yeah exactly i mean yeah barrage is gonna be really good at, at dealing with that dome shield once that flame turret goes down all the other tanks can walk in it's really the only thing stopping them you know actually dragon punch coming in i don't know who's gonna go for it not to the point yeah. it looks like maybe no it rotates to the side dodge through time oh. and space by still going on sips get pixel a little bit over aggressive into aryavon and no dome shield goes off wow yeah they end up killing styles to make sure that not only does he not get get the shield off, but to make sure that their team doesn't have a frontliner to really rely on. Anara is there now. She is trying her best to make sure that she can stall this out. Bust down is doing a good job at fighting back. But man, oh man, I don't know. Oh wait, they actually came in. The Calvary just, not even gonna mention it. Calvary just comes through. Calvary's here. No, no worries. It's, it is the Calvary because they all come back on their mounts. Exactly, Slay's going to yeah, touch the saying. point, but it looks like it's not going to be enough. Paradogo, I don't think anyone's going to. They're not even moving in spawn. Yeah. They know. They know they don't have the time to do it. Still, great. I think great callback by Bust Down. That game was a lot closer than game one was yeah, for was. effect, but I mean, just, just winning after that first game has got to feel good. Yeah, I mean, it was such a strong, demanding lead from last time. And now yeah. we're seeing a situation like that. It was a lot closer, and then they really just showed out and just came through, bust down, taking this first game against, mm -hmm. um, like, against taking the their team. first game, yeah. yeah, taking their first game on Stone Keep. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I really like how Bust Down managed to adapt to. I mean, like, the, their second mid was a little rocky with how they played. Well, sorry, the second mid was good for Bust Down. The first mid was rocky. They adapted from then on. Effect had some counterplay, counter positioning, but not enough high damage charts for all the hit yeah. scans. Something you'd kind of come to expect. On console, I would say hit scan such a high priority. There's a reason they get banned. But Paradoggo Leon not banned super often, really yeah. showing that maybe you should think about it, especially if you want to play a Drogos. 19 and 6 between him and Dreams Era was some of the most credits in the entire game. Paradoggo, man, we saw him just really opening up like uh, like he's just literally parting the Red Sea yeah. for his team to be able to just move on through and either either get the defenses or just cap the points that they needed to. I mean, him and him and the Vivian combined had yeah. all, I think had almost more kills than all of Effect. I was trying to do the yeah. math really quick. It, it was definitely like it's like 33 or something right, across yeah. everybody on Effect. So. Still, fantastic by Perry. The Enlightenment there, unfortunately, getting stuck in the well. No Lassie to help pull that out. Perry Dog actually almost got the triple there, too, but yeah. barely saved by the tanks. Uh, I, I liked I liked Bust Down's draft here. They adapted to the Drogos kind of just they just, just raining down on them last time. They did, actually. You made a good point about how the Drogos can be effective on Stonekeep, about the areas it is that he can actually use the high ground he can maintain. But the thing is, is that it just was too hard for him to position in a way to try and stop both Leon and Vivian. Because it was like if one didn't get him, the yeah. other one. He got forced to play a little defensive because right, he went exactly. combustible. If he had gone Worm Jets, he maybe could have still played and keep been mm -hmm. flexible. But he chose to go combustible. I don't think it was an awful call, but I mean, Bust Down just, Bust Down called his bluff. They pushed him. He didn't have a way out. I mean, yeah, and called, called his bluff. They did. Now that the score is 1 1, we're going to go right into game three, but only right after this break. Alienware, the official PC provider of the Paladins Console League.
Game two in the books and bust down there on the board here, taking game number two over effect on Stone. Keep a close one, though. We go seven, Gore, and uh, it was very contested all the way through, but at the end of the day, the Genos uh, Victor Leon combo, it wins the day. It was everything that you really needed all on one side. Yep. But it, it was interesting to see how they adapted to it. I think that was the thing. Like, effect, again, we're kind of in control mm -hmm. for some of it. And you could see, I mean, going back and forth, 1-1, one, 2-2, one, two, two, and so on and so forth. But they they were, like, right there, right? I think right. if one of those fights at the very end point fight changes, obviously it, the entire game changes. But Bust Down, we're ready for them. Not just once, but then twice. And then even a little bit of a third time mm -hmm. at the very end to just control the game. And this region, week one, both of the games were, were at least a 3-1. So no matter what, we're at least going to get a 3-1 again here. So already a little bit more contested than maybe what we're used to seeing. Map yeah. two is done for. Let's see what map three has in store for our second set of the day. Serpent Beach, it is. The the Drogos is something that Kresnik kind of pointed out. Not necessarily the Drogos itself, but choosing to go combustible instead of worm jets, I think, in the last game. Maybe an interesting choice. Cut out a couple times, uh, end of Dragon Punch, just kind of sitting there and, and waiting for some of the damage to come through from the opposite side. Maybe an interesting choice to mix up there, but Serpent Beach, yeah. another map where Drogos can uh, maybe flex his wings. A bit. And I like to say I called it because it makes me happy when I when I think about it. I like I like <laughs> the the flow of maps that these guys have chosen as well because like I feel like. When you get rid of Jag and Frog, like you get rid of the snipers, I think Frog Isle adds another little bit of versatility to it. And Jaguar Falls has its own, but you can kind of replace that with Bright Marsh in a lot of instances and maybe still right. have things work. But it, it, you get all flavors, right? You get a little bit from Bright Marsh where it's like, okay, this is a little more CQC. There's some open skies, so if you want to do Drogos or Willow, you can have that. But a lot of it's like, okay, we're going to be close quarters. I'm going to sure. be in your face. That's going to be how we're fighting. You move to Stone Keep, and it's like, okay, no man's land is the point. We're fighting for high ground on the side. Then you get here, and it's balcony to balcony and waterfall control. So it's just fun to see how these teams are going to tackle kind of a different strategy on the same map. And vertical mobility Whoa, tends to be the uh, the way of the road here. you got to have somebody who can hopefully retake high ground when you're on that offensive push. Of course, the defending team basically just walks out of base into free high ground here. Atlas hell. first picked by effect. Tyra goes unbanned as well. Makes her way into the bust down lineup this time around. I do like that they avoid – or they – of, I guess avoid Girls, banning Tyra to coming. then ban the Genos. I think Genos, it's one of those things like very composition based as to which one's going to be quote unquote better than the yep. other for their damage reduction or their damage boost that they're going to have. I guess so Tyra, damage amp against tanks is really, really solid. Damage amp against anybody is really solid, right. but she's a little, it feels more effective against like the front lines. To Atlas and Nara going to have to be wild. scared here. Genos kind of effective against everybody. It might not burn down the tanks as much, but if you give your DPS that boost and they're going like one on one with another DPS, they tend to the win. Unfortunately, you get Tyra and Victor, and that means yeah. that Atlas and Inara should be quaking in their boots. Yeah, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous about that, especially with uh, Grover coming out for for Dreams as well. That kind of dictates a play around me kind of aspect. Nobody ever too far from one another, and that's that is just too much damage I think to withstand. The point is secondary, though, with Terminus being picked up here for bust down, especially with Atlas on the opposite side. You still have Barrack on the board. Ash is still available, but but Terminus is the the first frontline pick here for bust down. Yeah, Run. I'm I'm going through it. So we do know, I, and I think this is still the case that it's a little hard to to trace him. There's no not as much aim assist oh, on yeah. Terminus right. as there are other champions. So he has that little thing going for him. But other than that, there's literally nothing I can think as to why you would pick him over insert it's every like other front line in the game. I mean, Khan is going to be good. Makoa is still available and unpicked. Like, I just can't give you a reason that I like Terminus. I think, obviously, having Power Siphon is going to be helpful. It's mm -hmm. going to help deal with Atlas. It's going to help deal with Leon on this Kinesa. map. But I think it's just going to be some good damage from effect. Like, I, I feel like this Terminus is going to be live or die for bust out. Sure. Maybe a little bit more die. You don't, you don't get to see Kinesa a whole lot on Serpent Beach no, either. Anymore. I mean, you got Terminus on one side, you got Kinesa on the other side. Got a clown fiesta in the making here for game number three. Casters, take it away. Terminus. Terminus. I should be the one chanting. Ter Dude, do you, you don't <laughs> understand how much I like Terminus. And even I really could not come up with a with a valid reason. I mean, what the biggest thing I can think of for this map would be the high ground potential, right? I mean, right. Terminus can still Shatterfall, make it to high ground. Inara can do it too, but Terminus, I mean, 
I would have said maybe to deal with the Knessa because other you know other tanks have like finite resources to block that. Terminus has you know, siphon that it is finite, yeah. but her shooting it doesn't make any difference still. I think it's going to be an interesting main tank pick. We did see it a lot last week in the PCL. Crush the choice uh, one way, I think, to deal with the Anora or Atlas if he can catch them with their cooldowns down. Yeah, I mean, it'll it'll be definitely a it'll be definitely a little bit of a challenge for Styles to get through for sure. It's going straight to point. Was dismounted by the Knessa. Yeah, immediately just saw what you were doing, Chris. Like that's as is it immediately true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did, I will admit, I did hear the tube of music go through my head as he walked to the point, but still Smutney finds the pick onto him. His siphon got used early, I think, from the Knessa pressure. There Doggo holding the top right, though. Looks like some aggression from Bust Down to get this forward zone. <laughs> yeah, I apologize. The Styles immediately went to point ended up dying. Lexia goes down next, thanks to Pair Doggo. And now it just seems like, really, like, Bust Down actually has control of the point now. Thanks to a few picks off on the sides onto the flanks, they were actually able to net a kill that was able to allow them to really push on the point and start show for to start showing this aggression. Emberfish up here, taking a few shots. He knows people are behind that corner. He's trying to get some damage off to make sure if they at least try and make it back to point, that they're going to have a hard time trying to fight. Yeah, Slay is using the speed to retake this high ground, but he's already marked, and Mark doesn't go away when you rewind. So once he gets rewind, he's probably going to remark here, but no, the Tyra has to back up. He's controlling this pretty well. The Firebomb on point, I think, is doing a lot to, to keep the, uh, the Inara off. The Terminus is getting a little bit from it, but Still terminus his pressure. I, I'm not sure if they can if he's gonna be able to stay there once the refight comes in, but I guess it doesn't matter if Smutney yeah, goes down. I mean, bust down Emberfish, impaired doggo. Now we see Arya Bond running down this Atlas. He does get a kill onto Slay Alexian's the next one to go down. The Knessa might be the next on the menu, but she does hip fire to make sure she gets the kill at least onto the victor. She does get it, but not before Arya Bond picks him off as well. Nice job coming off from them, honestly. Like, they did so well with just their positioning and their aggression so far. Styles, the zero on one so far on Terminus, but I believe he can. Yeah, I was going to say, the, the only death he had was that initial one true, going yeah, towards true. the point. And I think that's a mistake that's easily fixed. You know, next mid, you slow right, down yeah. a little bit, maybe use a little bit of natural cover. That's one of Terminus' bigger strength. Like, that's one of Terminus' things if you can play around the map, because you can use your cover to recharge your siphon. If they push you, then you can immediately, you know, siphon or recover there. Yeah. Uh, so that's good for him. Looks like actually a little fight going down in Orange Atlas having to use his rewind. Victor looking for something but can't quite find it with the barrage. Yeah, the grenade comes through. He's taking a few shots on the Atlas. Slayer in a bad spot and he gets punished for doing so. Just being in that general area. Alexia being forced to back off this little bit. Dress Serpent to try and stop the con so she, so, uh, so she can actually get like some damage off onto it. But the commander's grab, dude, comes through. Does end up getting... He does end up getting Emmerfish still, but Styles kill, finds a kill on the Smutney, though. The pressure on Payload is just so, so strong for Bust Down right now. Yeah, actually, great positioning by Emmerfish, because when he got feared, he walked perfectly into that column, so he was still kind of in cover. So good foresight, that Dread Serpent. Not too, I don't think it was too uh, predictable. So right, yeah. Good to keep that in mind. Sibs here resetting with the Knesset Spam. Another Barrage coming in, oh, barely, barely avoided by Sibs. So no value from that from Bust Down, unfortunately. We'll have to see how they how they hit tap from that on this offense. Yeah, they now that the barrage is down, they know they got a little bit more time to actually last, but I was just about to mention the seismic crash. Comes through, but Terminus with the body block though, just eats up pretty much most of it, if not all of it, for his team. Peridago is taking the advantage of that with getting two kills, one on Sheik, one on Slayer. Emmerfish gets one onto Smutney, and now the payload is pushing in for the second point on Serpent Beach. I and mean, everybody knows the Terminus' new pass yep. is the last patch, so he can catch ultimates with his teeth, and <laughs> shown <laughs> there very effectively <laughs> by Styles, uh, denying that seismic crash with his face. That's always fun to do with term because yeah. you know even like if you die, it's like, well, yeah, sure, so help me, I don't care. I'll just, I'll just yeah. res. You know, I'm the only person with two lives to abuse there. Looks like damage charts topped again by Paradogo. Seven and one. Phenomenal performance. Also, dreams. She's not yet died. One and zero. Eight yeah. assists. And Grover on this map, it, it's not that easy to live that long because you have to still be close to your team. If you lose high ground, if you get forced back, it's hard to keep your team alive while while staying safe. I think. True. Yeah. I mean, it's. A little bit of a little bit of an uphill battle still. Like I feel like Effect does have the chance to actually make this comeback, but I mean the level two is already online for bust down with them getting their second items already with effect being on one as is Knessa. Sims taking a few shots, trying to dismount him, misses a few, doesn't actually get the hit onto Styles though. So this time he's gonna be fighting this Anara one-on-one on point. 
Yeah, yeah, the trades back and forth here. Sheik holding this high ground, spamming a little bit. Terminus actually saved by the wall from the NR, basically lets him reheal the full. Firebomb forced the NR back. Ooh. Overpower onto Atlas, actually, but I, do they have the damage? They have to use the crossfire they have to. to confirm the kill. The barrage Ooh. comes in too with Peridago catching out Sheik there. Aryavan rotating back to the high ground. Fight's still not over yet. Yeah, bust down. Actually getting two kills is going to be pretty huge with Spundy being the only one left on the point. Now that he goes down, bust down is looking to pretty much close out this point. Trying to get the payload started for the Sibs. Trying to find just any sort of shot to get himself started. It's going to be a little bit hard for him to be able to do that though from this position. Yeah, the thing about Kinesa on this map is like she has deep angles, but they're very specific. Yeah. So you can play around those angles and kind of abuse it and... Sibs, when he gets the opportunities, isn't 100% confirming his shots. Yeah. When you're stuck with that level of, like, they're only playing around you a couple times, you have to hit the shots with the count. And it's really unfortunate for him that he's under so much pressure, under so much great positioning from bust down to, uh, to avoid that. Yeah, we're looking, we're, we're seeing the same situation that we literally saw last round where they're already this far up, applying the pressure, the payload is steadily moving, but see, the rest of effects though, they know they're all in this corner. If there's any situation, but Styles, him being in the spot that he is, if he dies, the res is gonna be important. And there it is, it comes through. He rises from his grave immediately, Slayer goes down, Sheik getting the enlightenment kill onto him, but doesn't get the refund because of the res though. Yeah, Terminus back from the dead, and actually he shatterfold up from the ground. I mentioned yep. this in the beginning, like, why pick Terminus on Serpent Beach? Well, high ground control is an option, and he immediately just jumps up in the middle of their whole team. You can't just not kill him. You right, can't just yeah. not give him that res. You have to deal with him. It's not like he's a non-factor. So that just completely cleans up that fight for bust down. Paradoxo here in a pretty strong position. Aryaban also really close, abusing Tyra's Ooh. close range power. Powers. Slayer gets his rewind forced, and he's marked. I don't know if he has a chance to touch. Yeah, he's trying to use the exile, but Emmerfish being in the front is preventing people from being exiled. He gets hit by that. The rest of them end up, well, not the rest of them, but Aryavon goes down. But now for Emmerfish can get a kill onto Sheik with the Atlas being the next on the menu. The crits are coming through. Kinesa did pop O, but the ultimates are coming through. Not only do Bust Down want to make sure they end this, they want to be up with a 2-1 lead, and it definitely seems like they're going to be able to make it. They are getting so close to it. Yeah, really good positioning by Paradoggo fighting multiple kills again. You have to deal with the backline on Serpent Beach. I believe the Slayer tried to do it, but just couldn't. Finally gets it now, but I'm not sure if it's going to matter. Dream, she finds a kill onto Atlas. Pressure from the right side. Tyra Crossfire gets a ton of damage, killing the Inara fight going both ways. Just Sib stalling the Man. cart, and it ends for Bust Down. I mean, I, I think Slayer had really bad target priority there in the end. Yeah. He had the con that was on his backline. That The Leon was the only person who could have contested Paradoggo, and he just walked right past the con, yep. walked right at the Leon, and everything fell apart after that. It's a situation in which you see yourself really just trying to like, okay, well, we have to make sure we defend this. We can still do it, yeah. so on and so forth, and bust downs like, look, we're so close to just being up I thought, you were, gonna, I thought you were going to be like, bust downs like, yo, we're so good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought that's what you were going to say, and it was just like, all right, I'll back yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, no, I mean like, I mean, that's true too, but at the same time, like they were in a situation where they're like, look, we have to end this. We have to make sure we actually cash this in. We got to go ham right now. And they just start dumping all these ultimates on the point. Yeah. Like just to make sure they can close this one out quickly and effectively with the 402, very convincing. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason not to at that point. You know, yeah. if you lose your 3 1, you still have a chance to take it, even though they have comeback mechanic. Bust down, Paradoggo. Wow. wow looking man. really, really strong there. Styles, it's funny, his only death was the one that we were we were we were joking about on right, mid where yeah. he went straight to point and dies and like I said he adapted you know he managed to figure out after that and uh, just the the double the double assault rifle backline draft from bust down I think was was really tough for effect to deal with even with the Kinesa again they played the sight lines and the Tyrus mark was a big part of that getting all this confirmable damage I mean Victor already does a lot of damage 25 percent I mean other than field study that's the biggest yeah. damage boost you can get from spray from from, from Arya Van onto him there he's holding on his high hooking down I like to. I liked their draft here. I think it was really good. Also, I didn't notice that was to cancel the exile too. That made that overpower even better. Oh, yeah, that's actually a good point to make. I didn't realize. I thought he had actually just managed to catch the allies like off guard. But up here, like you see, Styles he puts up the wall, Dread Serpent to try and not only fear them, but to make sure that they actually could try and cash in. But Styles, man, that was such. I'm glad that you mentioned that because that was really good. Like for him to be able to like come up at the right time and the Inar puts up the wall, not yeah. realizing that he's like right behind them. Was yeah, such he wasn't trapped in there with it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. were trapped in there with, with him. him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they were just stuck in there, unfortunately, fighting against Styles, literally 1v3, such a dominant, dominant lead coming out from Bust Down with the 4 0 on Serpent Beach. But don't go anywhere for game four because we'll be right back after this break.
Paladin's Console League is brought to you by Evil Mojo Games, developers of Paladin. Well, in pretty convincing fashion, bust down, bust down effect, who are still feeling the effect of game number three. Quick 4-0, much faster than any of the other two games we had up to this point, Gore. Uh, too many people, honestly, on bust down five specifically. I think you could highlight everyone individually. The Terminus looked okay. I mean, a 2-1-5, and five, the least amount of impact of yeah. everyone in that game, but uh, still was okay. I'm impressed with the the fact that they were able to take Terminus who, who in all instances is just hands down worse than Alice. Like yeah. there's literally no way to <laughs> cut that other than he is worse than Alice and win a game with him. That was impressive. Pear Doggo though was probably yeah. the one that stood out. Like Victor's um, like do well on console tend or they tend to at least. This was exceedingly well. Very yeah. similar to what we were seeing in like the first set from Flashpoint where it's just it was just really good. So 10 out of 10. Can't escape it. Can't, can't escape Wood the proper logic on, <laughs> on console days. Uh, map three, we're going to close that book, move it to the side, open up the book for map number four. It's going to be Splitstone. Bust down or looking to round out our second set of the day. Effect taking us to Splitstone quarry here. Map one, I mean, interesting to, to look kind of at that scoreboard. You harken all the way back to map one, and Effect yeah. surprised us all, I think. 4-0. On Bright Marsh, a little bit contested in uh, game two, but bust down all the momentum now. So, looking at a pattern, this one would be a 4 3, but for effect, and then the next okay. one's a 4 0 or something like that. Either way, if you want it to be symmetrical, <laughs> if you want it to be symmetrical, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see, like, so effect being able to bring or willing to bring, like, Knessa to Servant mm -hmm. Beach, which is something that we haven't seen in a long time and hasn't necessarily True. been as big lately, especially when this, it was like when the scope changes came through that started happening significantly less. Right. And this is a map where, again, you could bring snipers. We've seen Strix. We've seen Kinesa. They do well on this map. But when you have Victor, you have Vivian doing as well and uh, being as prominent as they are on console, right. it almost makes you not Champions even bother thinking of the snipers. Like the, law, the furthest you get down that list is to Leon, which I would argue is like just above, okay, now we're going into the scopes. But even then, you're not going to have to worry or think about those as much. So I'm wondering if Effect Your maybe want to do that, right. Your or if we'll just safe. watch them disappear into the void. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough to go up against no matter what. Tyra not banned out this game either. Bust down, I'm sure would be plenty here. fine picking up Victor and Tyra as that one too, especially with uh, Genos off the oh, board yeah. as well. Give a little bit of damage amp to the entire team. Tends to be the name of the game. Uh, Vivian, though, and Nara rounded out for the first two picks here for effect, Give and them hell. there you go. I've spoken into existence. Victor Tyra picks one and two for bust down here. Maybe a Grover to round out their three. I mean, is a Nara high enough priority to pick second, especially with Tyra still on the board? No, <laughs> that's right. uh, it's just she's not. I don't. I don't think like we've seen Barrick do just perform, outperform Inara a little mm -hmm. bit more. So I feel like she would probably, or he would probably even come before her. But in this case, especially when you look at, I mean, exactly what they got, right? Victor and Tyra together. That Inara doesn't exist. Yeah, no. Even with damage reduction, that Inara is going to be taking so much damage. And so you're putting more pressure onto your Vivian and whoever else is going to be playing DPS or whatever other DPS you go for in just hopes that they can relieve some of that pressure. But I mean, we saw what the victor was able to do last game, and yep. I would argue last game it was probably in a so somewhat more difficult like position just because there was a Kinesa. Be maybe discovered. they could hunt him down. Maybe they could pop him off. But Torvald's going to at least try to equal the playing field. Yeah. 
Maybe a little bit more even. I mean, Torvald tends to not be banned, also tends not to be picked very much in the console league. So we at least are going to get to see a little bit of Torvald this time around, depending on who Effect rounds out their lineup with. We'll see maybe who uh, the Torvald pockets. Makoa, though, of course, another, you know, seventh pick Makoa here in this case, and another Terminus for bust down. They liked it last game. Styles at 2-1-5. Just a, fine, just a fine KDA for him that time around. And Makoa, it's a strong front line to get uh, this late in the draft. Oh, yeah. And being able to come through with it, I mean, you're going to have hooks that's going to set up Vivian kills, Furia kills, Leon kills as well. Right. Vivian and Leon as well, this game, they have to blow it out of the water. They have yeah. to knock it out of the park every single engagement because you are coming in. Victor, Tyra, all Tyra has to do, or Victor, either one, get a right. record. And then all of a sudden, this Torvald doesn't mean anything anymore. He's going to die, and then his bubbles no longer exist. So I think Bust Down have a little bit stronger of a draft effect. Right. Can still make it work, but with, based on last game, I'm leaning a little bit more blue. Well, Effect are going to hope to come out of the gates firing. You know, they got the Torvald early game before all that record comes online, and they need it one game away from being out of this set. Bust Down one game away from rounding it out. Let's send it down to your casters to get it started. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If they want to pick Terminus one game, let them pick Terminus the next game if it worked out pretty well for them. Yeah, at least they got the Makoa, too. That's one of the bigger Terminus yeah. counters, you know, off the board. That hook through the siphon really is just instant death. So since it's on the same team, it's not going to be quite as difficult for Styles, I think, to play the way he wants to with the Terminus. Uh, Terminus is still fine for, like, quarry comp on this map, I think, if you want to play on that side. Uh, it's really good. Is that a Tremors? Tremors. A I Interesting. I, I, I get it against double hit scan, but at the same time, we'll have to see if that's really what they decided to stick with throughout this. Looks like both teams holding, trying to fight the right side, but Bust don't have the advantage in, in the quarry to start. Yeah, they do. Effect bringing out not only the Anara, but also reminding everyone she has talents other than Mug like talents other than Earth and Guard in that situation. She puts up the wall once again. Slayer gets the kill onto Arya Van. Dreams Era follows it up by getting a kill on Sheik. They trade one for one here. The point is a little bit in control of Buzz Down though with 30% onto it, steadily climbing. Paradago finds the kill on the Sibs. And now the rest of Effect are trying to stall as long as they can, but with really just this Furia, they're gonna try and dive her. They do get the kill. And then immediately after that, they're just gonna dive right onto Anara. Yeah, both hit scans just doing a lot of damage. I mean, this is basically yeah. like the dream deep. Wow, that's a lot of siphon used there, Styles. Yeah. The, this is a uh, like dream DPSs for both sides, right? Like these these characters get banned all the time. Victor, Tyra, Vivian, Leon. Like, I mean, maybe, maybe less so Leon, but still, it is a hit scan that still performs really well on console. So, I'm sure all the teams are happy with that. And Bustdown's got to be happy with how theirs performed on that mid. I think great positioning, yeah. getting all those kills. Sibs got a little too aggressive, I think, trying to catch the kill on the Makoa. Didn't realize how quickly he'd get healed, but looks like he wants to make up for it right now with the start of that fight. All right, Bound goes down first. Sibs does end up finding the kill, but we see that Leon is so low. Emmerfish actually moving out a little bit too much. Does end up getting the kill onto him, though, which that's going to be pretty big. Two of them down, one of them just respawning for bust down. The other one, i.e. Makoa, actually does respawn as well. Now the rest of them are going to try and move onto point or back onto Palo, trying to regain their footing in this match. Yep, let's see. Pretty dominant high ground positioning from Effect while Sibs raining hell onto that Grover. Gets him Ooh. really low, but he has to back up too. Good rotation by Paradoggo. Small little angle at the top of that ramp you can use. Barrage coming in on the ground does not look for Sibs, so he might still be able to free fire here. Oh, kill, man. He does find the kill in the NR with that, though. Great start for this for Bustdown. Yeah, she tried to seismic crash to try and make sure she can at least get a stun so the rest of her team can get started. But man, oh man, are they just rolling through these individuals right now? The Furio, oh, the Inflame comes through, but I've seen Paradoggo Chicago's name pop up so many times, I'm surprised it's just not him on the team alone. I want a name to see, right? That's, that's what I'm saying, it actually, yeah. It makes, every time I see their name, it makes me happy. Yeah. Because it, it's such, like, a, I could just imagine a little dog face on a pair. I'm like, oh. It's so adorable, right? So, you know, yeah. when, he, when he's, like, fragging and massacring an entire enemy team, yeah, you're just exactly. like, oh, how can you be mad? Even even enemy right, team, exactly, like, oh, yeah. we were losing to Paradoggo, man. It's, oh, it's a that's cute so cute. Anyway. Yeah, I mean. Like, <laughs> Siv's getting caught out here by this crossfire on the side. Does barely manage to get away thanks to the power of Torvald, but Torvald oh, can't man. really save himself, but the seismic crash can. Fantastic peel. This fight's looking, oh, actually. Yeah, they no, they still, really lost, yeah wow. they still lost that exchange, actually, from the seismic crash. It was a good stun, but it was just too much damage coming out from them. Paradoggo, once again, bringing out all the stops, all the damage. It's so difficult for them to actually try and come back. The revive is there. The Ancient Rage is there. Barrage is slowly building. Crossfire was using that last little bit, and that nets them the second point on Splitstone Quarry. 
If they do that again, they've they've already captured this game. I already won. Yes, two plus two does equal four. Stefan, no, it's okay. true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. No, no, I'm you're right. right. No, you're right. You're not, you're absolutely not wrong, and we're also not wrong about Paradogger having phenomenal games so far. Eight zero. Wow, just unkilled. The death for Aryavon there. I mean, that was a sacrifice for the greater good. I Yo, mean, thinking about that pressure on the side. Forcing everybody down into mid. I thought the Seismic Crash was enough to turn it, but it looks like Aryavan was actually the only person who pushed that angle. Yeah. So everybody else was in mid just waiting for the Torv to jump down. And Torv not having the best game so far, I think. I really haven't felt his presence. I don't know. Yeah. Can, can I shoot damage shielding? So I can see exactly how much he's done, because that's kind of how you like weigh yeah, a Torvald's I mean, impact. Yeah, he's doing a decent amount of shielding. It's not yeah. bad. You know, 31k this early. That is all damage that's being sucked away from everybody else. So, again, you can't really look at a Torv's damage and tell how he's doing, but still, I just don't feel his impact in terms of the damage boost and everything. Yeah, I'm not really seeing it that much either. The the Vivio comes through, but Sim just goes down immediately in response. He uses the Ancient Rage to make sure that he can get the kill. He does find it, forcing Torvald to fall back just a little bit. But the rest of them, dude, are just being forced back just off of this Makoa Emberfish in such a good spot right now. Now Peridago and the rest of Bust Down are going to try and push him. Oh! What? Great flank. Fantastic flank. Actually, Sheik, that was the moment I did see the Torvald's present. Sheik just barely getting saved by the yeah. Torvald bubble when he dashed away, but Paradogo had the perfect flank Man. once that bubble ran out. I mean, he didn't get healed in the meantime, so death was still imminent for him. He's going to have to give up this high ground, though. Smutney, great pressure up here. He's going to have to walk straight in to touch this. Oh. The wall, perfect. Tremors, I mean, helping with that damage, but okay. I don't even know if he got the touch. I'm not sure if his toes touched the point. Looks like they did, so good for bust down, but Effect might have to throw themselves onto this point. Yeah, the rest of them are trying to make sure that they can do it. He's just eating the ultimate, just pretty much preventing it, but nice hook. The Makoa Emmerfish went around, actually ended up stopping the CC that Torval was actually trying to output. Trade one for one. Dreams and Sheik both get a kill respectively for their teams. Emberfish is in such a good spot right now. He wants to be able to hold this ground, just control the small little room while the rest of Bust Down starts pushing this one in. That's, a, that's an awful feeling as a Torvald when like you, you, you have the hyper beam that saves the point and then yeah. you just see them just use a CC immunability. Like yeah. they use Shatter Fall and they just land and cap in front of you and you're like, well, well, I do no damage. That all took eight years. This is fine. Uh, I worked on that for eight years and yeah. here it goes. <laughs> but it's like they're, they're using some ultimates to try to convert this. Oh, in man. Light encounters the crossfire though. Really good by Sheik. Reanimate comes out too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good wall by Smutney. He'll have another in three seconds thanks to Tremors, but I don't know if it's going to be able to keep him alive under all this fire. Damage is going on to Styles, forcing him to back up. That's a little bit more. Emberfish and the rest of them. The Barrage comes through, but they are I guess they aren't really paying attention. Not only Sheik, but nor the Anara Smutney with these walls. I'm actually not sure. Like, there's actually like a quick like diversion. Like the Whirlwind does come through, but like has the impasse really been hitting its mark? Has it really been utilized that well? This I, I think so. I mean, he's he's not using it to wall people off. He's using it just to sustain himself because that wall, I mean, if, if he's just putting it up every three seconds, that's forcing Bulldozer, you know? Yeah, so that's I true. Actually, yeah, that's true. Man, I, I, one thing I've also noticed about Smutney's play is he's really just in with these seismic crashes. Yeah, he really just wa he smells blood in the water with them. And someone else who smells blood in the water right now is Emmerfish. Basically, Jaws in the back line right now, getting two kills behind them with that Ancient Rage. Finding another two onto Lexi, that's, that's a rough pick for them. Really late stagger. The healing is just not going to be there now. Barrage is about to come through as well with Crossfire steadily building. Smutney going down is going to be such a difficult situation for Effect to come back from. They're going to have a hard time trying to just find their opening right now. Now they got to wait for the Anara to come back. It's going to be a little bit of a problem. Yes, yeah, so with Inara down, I mean, like, Torvald's not really a tank in the main sense. They send Vivian in. She's so important, and throwing her away from this touch is going to be big. She does get saved by the healing from the Vivian and the Torv, but Crossfire will just shred through those shields like they're not even there. The beam, great Man. from Lexi, but it's not going to be enough. The Inara impassing next to the point, 700 HP, 200 uh. HP down. Everything goes Bust Down's way. What a turn after game one. I mean, if, if after game one you're like, oh, yeah, Bust Down win this 3-1, I'd be like, yeah, what are you talking about? Really? You sure about that? Get out of here, Names random guy when that you got were, to when the you studio. Were, yeah, see? Yeah. <laughs> how did you get in here? Yeah. You had to swipe in. I don't know how you made it through those doors, but... Still, though, great. I think great by Bust Down recovering mm -hmm. after that 0-4. They, they adapted the draft a little bit, like we mentioned yeah. on the second map. Banning Drogos, too, on the later maps, just to say, we don't even want to have to counterplay it. We're just going to take it out of your hands. Yeah, I mean, they did such a good job too with just like the aggression like their momentum had shifted just immediately after they tied it up 1-1 then from stone keep onward they just kept steamrolling through effects lineup Herodaga with 82,000 damage up on the board Sheik not too far behind either but I just think their composition just how they played it was a lot better in this situation yeah I agree I mean they had the better quarry comp 
yeah. just having Terminus, Tyra, those are really good characters for taking and controlling that area. Oh, and when you control that on this map, it's really big. Styles, I... Okay, I, I forgot. I don't think reanimate deaths count. No, no, Could yeah, be wrong yeah, yeah. about that. I was going to say, like, he didn't even get to use his ultimate, but I, I believe he did. Yeah. So still Styles not dying. Terminus, I mean, he ran undying on, as his legendary, and uh, he meant it this game. Yeah, yeah, he definitely did. Tennis says so much positivity on the side of Bust Down as well. It did really, really good. Just, I mean, like, look at the damage, just the credits, just everything itself. But Emmerfish, man, like, he definitely came through a clutch a lot of the time around this map. Yeah, I agree. And that's not something. I mean, Makoa is not a pick that always goes first on console. I mean, we saw it a couple times already today, but, I mean, he went, he was the last rotation, I think, for the first yeah. pick here. And, Reminding everybody that, I mean, he's good. <laughs> Miko is just good. He puts out so much damage. His ability to just shield and dash out with his ebb and flow reset, uh, all that stuff is just so impactful for him. And, yeah. I mean, when, it, when someone like Emmerfish is piloting it, I mean, you, you know how much impact it can have. Yeah, I mean, it's just him in the back line just swinging this mouth of this Torval, trying so hard to get away, but unfortunately couldn't actually escape. Just the pressure that Emmerfish was able to exude with that Terminus following him up was just so important. And that's something I thought I would really never say, is just being like, oh, this Things Terminus. Change, I mean, I didn't think a week ago that I'd be talking about Lex and Willow at true, the professional that's true, level, that's you know, true. but, that's but true. here we are. Things change all the time. Terminus used to be a first pick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and really soon we'll be talking about Io as well. Yeah, Hope so. I'm really, really excited for that one. Super excited for that to see Io. However, now that the game is over, we're going to throw it right back to the desk and get some final thoughts. Appreciate it, fellas. That's going to do it for the European portion of the console league today. Another week, another 3 1 for Bust Down. This time, though, they find themselves in the winning column. Convincing performance down the stretch. I feel like we've seen a lot of game ones that are like super in favor of the team that ends up losing and then a clean yeah. sweep from, uh, from, the, or from the opposing team, I should say. Uh, down the stretch there. I mean, it's just a, that, I guess that, I don't know how to describe it, like tripping yourself over. Like, right. you kind of, like, you get a, a boon of confidence because you just 4 0 but the other team's like, oh, man, you know what? We messed up in draft. Let's just change up a couple of things. We got this. Like, that 4 0 was a very convincing 4 0 from Effect. I thought this was going to be a very different day, and I was like, man, yeah. I, I was leaning bust down at the beginning of the day. Effect, like, they're here to play, but to, to close out a set, they're going to need a little more work. A little bit more work, and, but. We saw some bright spots, affect certainly with a uh, maybe a bright future here in the console league. Some stuff to work on, but still some good games over bust down today. The schedule as it stands, halfway through our day, Ariel Arise. Ooh. They drop 3-1 to Aaron Monner. Flashpoint, though, with a 3-0 over Stush. 3-1 effect, and yeah, wow. that's, that's where my eyes are. Maybe the most surprising matchup of the day was the second Xbox EU matchup in Vroom Froom with the 3-2 victory over Cyclone Gormizer. That, I mean, Cyclone not only went undefeated in our last split, but only dropped I think four, I think four maps total, total maps, yeah. all of them to bust down if I remember correctly. Maybe one was an outlier there, but they never outright lost and they did today. And that is just kind of baffling honestly i'm yeah. more excited to see vroom vroom it's been two I weeks guess, now yeah. <laughs> that they've been kind of hiding under the blanket i guess and so i mean they're they're un unleashing full force mm -hmm. and we might actually have a region on our hands might have a region on our hands saw the standings let's sir uh, we saw the schedule i should say let's see where the standings now result yeah don't scratch is, your uh, eyes vroom vroom up top two zero and three is their plus minus towards the end there cyclone with a rare one in the loss column if you have room for him, you got to be feeling good about that. Of course, down in the PS4 region, Flashpoint and Aaron Monner, both 2-0. and oh. Both of them will, I think that means they'll be facing each other next week. So a battle of the undefeateds in EU PS4 next week. Uh, Flashpoint takes first because of their plus minus. But but you're right. I think the, the, the thing that needs to be talked about is kind of a final segue in EU is that Vroom Vroom beat Cyclone. I mean, it was a 3-2, but they won the day. Yeah, and on a, it's closing on that last map. That's the hardest thing to do in those sets when you hit the game five. And Cyclone has experience in that position. They're usually the kind of team that can close that out. I mean, Bust Down has given them, again, a, a run for their money a lot of times, but never been able to take it. This is the first yeah. team in this region this year to be able to take them down. So even if it's just once, even if it's a fluke, if you want to call it that, it's good. Either way, we could have yeah. a very interesting region. I'm, I'm very excited now to see how all of this plays out. Normally, Cyclone tried and true up to the top there, but for now, it's Vroom Vroom. That's going to do it for the European side of things, though. We're going to take a quick break, and on the other side, we're starting North America. Hi now. 
powering the control room for the Paladin's console league. 